What's going on, everybody? So today I wanted to talk about Sorvili as well as Daniel here, the banners that are going on, as well as I just wanted to comment because I was watching a video from Dan the other day and he was talking about how he had the take where he wasn't impressed with Sorvali in his video because I watched the whole video. I recommend you all to go watch every video that he puts out for the first impressions. <laughs> The guy usually ends up maxing out the characters and giving us a good, accurate kind of judgment of what a character should look like, should be, uh, etc. It gives you guys just a little bit more information before you summon, which is always nice. Um, it's it's not going to be perfect, obviously. We're not perfect, but it is always nice to see a little bit more information before you summon. And so people got really, really mad, um, which for one, I just want to say, I mean, there's nothing really that you could do. Some people will just have their opinions and... Uh, and they just <laughs> they just sit there and they'll they'll scream and shout and let it all out and there's nothing you can really do because people are just you know there's some people that, that approach it a little bit nicer and there's some people that will just you know, again just call you trash which is what he was dealing with but i actually think that his initial take was kind of correct not because i think she's absolute trash i don't want to i don't think that at all um but I think that his initial take, I kind of agree with, and obviously I, I don't agree with anyone um, that's just gonna, you know, again, insult someone for having a different opinion than you. But a lot of people were, uh, or actually a couple of people were messaging me after I was talking about Sorvali as well as Anpu, uh, because I thought Anpu was a pretty meh character as well. If you guys saw my videos, I even made a video saying, time to ditch Anpu, I'm gonna summon for Crete, even though I think Anpu's a, a, a solid character, definitely not bad by any means. I think he's solid, uh, but I don't think that he's worth summoning for. Over someone like Crete, over someone like Daniel, Leo, Emma, I think all of those are more valuable than Anpu, which is what I was kind of comparing them to. So he's definitely not like a bad character. He's just not like top, top, top tier, unless you're considering some specific game modes. And so there's two things I wanted to mention. You have to talk about Anpu if you want to talk about Sorvali because Sorvali summons these deer spirits, right? She has a lot of summons. She has arguably uh, some of the most summons that you get accrue on a team outside of, you know, maybe uh, potentially like if you get Kalaza out there, but Kalaza doesn't really summon as fast as she does. Uh, Anpu doesn't have as many summons. Daniel doesn't have as many summons. Senwe doesn't have as many summons. Even Muka uh, it doesn't have quite as often summons as Sorvali. And so because of that, you want to pair them together, Anpu and Sorvali, a lot of the time because you end up having a lot of these different combos with them. Now, again, the experience I've had with Sorvali and Anpu uh, is on another account, brief testing, and then watching the same content that you have. And I've seen some people have some really amazing combos with Sorvali. In fact, I even got messaged by um, Dialar, guys, if you guys don't know who he is, I think he creates a lot of content. I actually did not know he created a ton of content, <laughs> um, but uh, I will leave a link to his channel, but he actually sent me a video saying, hey, what do you think about Anpu now? Because he actually was doing a ton of damage with Sorvali. And I agree, that comp is actually pretty cool. It's pretty cool because you might be able to just combo Sorvili and Anpu together for a specific PvP comp, and then just use that as one of your three comps in potentially Summit Arena, et cetera, et cetera, which is actually a pretty powerful combo. And in fact, if you combo the dealer with like Sinsaro Marsh or any AOE area where your corpse exploding all the time, Sorvili actually does a good amount of healing with her passives and such, um, as well as also making Anpu do a ton more damage which basically means that she essentially is doing the doing did the damage, right? Anpu doesn't really do a ton of damage. It's that all these other summoners are enabling him to do a lot of damage. Unlike someone like Daniel, for example, who enables everyone else as well, ups their damage a little bit, but then also just does a ton of damage on his own. That's the key difference between the two. And so when you talk about Sorvali and you talk about Anpu, and I mentioned don't summon for Anpu, I don't think that he's that good in kind of like a vacuum i don't think he's good enough to summon for compared to some other characters right again if you already have crete um immortal if you already have emma immortal if you already have leo immortal if you already have daniel immortal then you might want to consider summoning for anpu because i think anpu's on the same tier as kind of like skewer and hattie although i would argue that skewer and hattie are a little bit more valuable in a lot of different scenarios than anpu and i think anpu is a little bit more valuable in some other scenarios like pvp and story but when you talk about Sorvali and Anpu, you kind of want to run them together. And in order for Anpu to do a lot of damage, you want them high level in Immortal, right? When you're talking about damage, 
Usually, in order for them to get a lot of damage out of their kits, you have to have them higher in the Immortal tiers because that's the main bottleneck for the Immortal, right? You get higher base stats, you get higher attack, your gear now does better, and now you can do more damage. When you talk about CC and things like that, where you have like Annie or Ampu or doing the AoE CC or Annie doing the AoE Black Hole, that's when you don't really need high mythics because they are already offering what they need to without being a high mythic. So now if we're talking about Sorvali and Anpu, now we have to summon for Anpu higher levels. We have to summon for Sorvali at higher levels, potentially not necessarily mythic or on immortal because all she needs to do is summon. However, in order to get access to her traits, which I'll show you guys here, you do need her to be a higher um, evolution level, which makes it so that you actually do need to summon a lot. For example here, um, you can see here, summons a deer spirit at the start of the battle. You're gonna want this if you wanna get maximum effectiveness. Um, other than that, whenever she casts a spell, she has a chance of summoning one deer spirit behind, behind her. So you want these two talents. Where do you get these? Um, well, you get this one at Epic 2, so that's not really that big of a deal. But then you get the Broken Dream at Legendary 3. So arguably, you kind of want Legendary 3, so she's actually summoning more deer spirits to really get value out of Anpu, right? This is kind of what you really get a ton of value out of because again you can see here um she summons uh she summons one spirit and then up to four deer spirits could be a present at the battlefield at the same time so she has to constantly cast the skill to actually summon her deer but if you have her where she's not necessarily super tanky and honestly these deer spirits are super uh super squishy as you can see they only have 13 percent of her hp um they only have 60 percent of her defense so if you don't real or with a ton of like necessary stats her dear spirits will just die really really quickly which is what you want with Anpu and that means that you really want this talent so that she's casting as many spirits as possible right that way when she uses her ultimate or when she uses this skill she has a chance of summoning more dear spirits which is pretty nice so then we want these both at a higher evolution levels to get a lot of value out of them and that's why I say I wouldn't recommend summoning for her or for necessarily Anpu although Anpu again I think is better than Silverly in a vacuum right if you're just comparing Anpu to Silverly and not them together I'd much rather have Anpu than Silverly in a lot of different scenarios because Anpu offers that AoE stun in story in Soulmine in PvP which can actually be really useful whereas Silverly uh Sorvali, I keep saying Silverly but it's Sorvali I, I I think she only offers that AoE drain which doesn't really do a lot Right? She doesn't really do a lot unless she has high max HP, which she needs higher levels to go ahead and get higher evolution levels, that is. And then, of course, all this max HP damage doesn't really do a lot, again, if you have low base stats. As you can see from over here, right, you just look at, for example, let's just look at Bada, who's Mythic 2, which is probably what you end up being. Right, She has a base HP of uh, 351k, whereas if you were to look at someone like, I don't know, Who's another summoner here up here? Mezrani is a perfect example, right? Because he is um, also a healer. He's got a base HP of 659k, which is almost double, which again, it expands upon that in your gear. Your gear is based on your base stats, which means that you're gonna get massively, massively more HP, um, potentially like six, 700, 800k HP more at an immortal level than at Silent Mythic 2, right? Which is pretty, pretty important. So. This is this is consistent across the board. So now you have to consider, OK, do I want to summon for Sorvali at this higher level, maybe like Legendary 3 or so? Do I want to invest exclusive 20s into this? Do I want to do that for Anpu as well? Or do I potentially just want to go for, I don't know, Bada? Maybe she will go ahead and improve your PvP comp more. Or maybe Ravenna or Luke, who will help tremendously in AoE stages already, right? If you combo Sorvali and Anpu together, and run them in Scythe Spider, is that better than just running, let's say you were to invest resources into both of them. Well, let's say you run an exclusive 20 Ravenna, who's like Immortal 2, and instead you invested everything into her. Is she better? But then you also have to consider what's the opportunity cost of running Sorverly and Anpu together, right? If you're gonna run Anpu and Sorverly and Muka and all these different things, who would you replace in that slot? Like instead of running Sorverly, let's say you would run, I don't know, uh, if it's a single turret stage, you might run Kalaza, Senwei, or Emma. Or are you going to get more damage out of that instead of comboing all these characters together? So the important factor is to think about your resources and to make sure you use them in the right way. As I mentioned from the title of this, I don't recommend for summoning for Silverly, but I don't think that means that she's bad. She's not bad. 
she's just specific and requires kind of to put together a comp around her. Whereas a lot of these characters don't really need that, right? Leo, I run in basically 90% of my comps. Emma, I slot in whenever I need single charge damage. Same with Daniel. If I have need AoE damage, I just slot him in. As Ronnie, the same way. I just slot him in every comp. Crete, also, same way. There's a lot of these characters that just fit in so many different comps. And I think that's way more valuable oftentimes, especially if you're low spending, because you don't have every character in the game, and therefore, you really need to manage your gene hybrids well and your summons well. So that's going to be my thoughts on the situation. And of course, I just want to mention it again, um, I hate, I hate seeing uh, creators get absolutely flamed for trying to just be helpful. I know because it happens to me all the time. It happens to all of us. Uh, so before you guys um, you know, absolutely just try to demolish someone, uh, well, I guess most of these people aren't really necessarily sitting to reason, but keep in mind that if you guys approach it with that kind of attitude, then, uh, well, most of us will just dismiss you because all you're doing is insulting. But otherwise, just know it's just an opinion. We're just here to try our best. There's no guaranteed anything. Just a disclaimer for anyone that might be uh, worried that we're saying that this is the way to go. Ob obviously, we're always going to come back and double check. For example, when I did um, you know, some, some testing on all the sorts of different things like Annie, uh, Daniel and Ampu, some people came back to me and uh, they provided that comp with I, which I showed you guys the other day, which is absolutely amazing. So at least I'm always, I know Dan is always listening to uh, your comments and trying to get the valuable ones from the, um, I guess you could say the not valuable ones. <laughs> so just be aware of that. And uh, I want to just mention that because uh, I, again, I was watching his video and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. But. Other than that, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. As per what I just said, if you guys have found any other use for Sorvali, or if you guys have found a really amazing um, kind of potential use that you should encourage people to summon for Sorvali over someone like Crete or Emma, again, when I'm comparing these characters, I'm comparing to the other really good triple S's that you may not have maxed out. For example, I did not. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's not like I'm comparing her to like, you know, I don't know, someone like Langle or someone, like she's trash. <laughs> um, so just keep that in mind. But again, I'm curious to hear all your opinions. And if you guys do find a really good use for her, let me know in the comment section down below and I might reconsider this opinion going forward. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.